Hello and welcome to Celebrating You and I'm so so inspired and excited today we have Tracy Jones who is going to tell us all about her photography and so much more so a very warm welcome to you Tracy. Thank you it's um, great to be here I'll say to share my story with you. Wonderful so exactly that tell us your story how did you get to be doing what you're doing? Okay, um, so it all starts back when I was 17. Um, I just finished, or just finishing my A-levels. Um, I was planning on going into some form of English sort of writing or something like that, um, but I didn't get the grades to go on to university and do any sort of English course. Um, so I, a couple of my friends were at Norwich City College and they seem to be really enjoying it there. So I just picked up a prospectus for the college and was looking through it. Um, and I flipped through it a few times and I kept stopping on the same page and it was photography. Um, I'd never, never really done photography before or anything. So yeah, it was, it was, I don't know, it just felt like the thing for me to do. So I decided to just take a few pictures, borrowed my dad's camera, um, took some really, really random pictures, but applied for the course um, and I got in. And I really enjoyed that course. Um, and then sort of for Christmas, the first year of that course, my parents bought me my first DSLR camera. Um, and from there, it just sort of carried on, um, carried on loving photography. And then went on to university and uh, uh, Anglia Ruskin University in Cambridge um, to continue to do a foundation degree in photography, which I then extended into a BA honours in photography as well. Um, throughout that course, uh, I was very much looking into CGI, so computer generated images, along with photography and how to combine the two things. Um, and that's what my final degree uh, degree project we show that's what I was doing um, and I was very much leaning towards going into advertising um, and then yeah I something I'd always wanted to do was to go traveling um, after after university so I just booked to book to go to three countries um, China Thailand Australia and um, it was it was a great experience uh, whilst I was in Thailand um, I I already had my iPhone water scuba diving license um, so I did just a piece of fun dives to the dive pool in Thailand and um, they had a underwater photographer working in the dive shop um, and I just got chatting to him and he said here, hire one of our cameras, come on a dive with me. And yeah, I instantly, instantly fell in love with underwater photography. Um, it just, it combines two things that I really loved, being underwater and photography. So uh, I went on to Australia after that, um, traveled from Sydney all the way up to Cairns, so the whole of the East Coast. And again, diving wherever I could on that trip. And again, hiring a camera, that was the first question I asked every time I got to the dive store was, do you have an underwater camera I can hire? And I did, and again, fell in love with everything I was doing. It was so amazing. I had so many amazing experiences, and met so many amazing people that by the end of that trip, uh, I've actually got a very specific memory of being in Cairns on one of the last days of my trip. Um, and just walking up the Esplanade in Cairns, just, I was by myself and just sort of thinking, I don't want to go home. Um, like, I want to stay here. It's, it's been amazing. Um, but at the other side of the argument, I had my graduation in October. So I knew I had to go back to my graduation. Um, if I didn't, obviously my parents would be very disappointed. So reluctantly, I got on the plane and went home. Um, went to my graduation and then kind of was stuck it's sort of a what do I do now sort of 
moment um, and send an email to the dive school in Thailand that I've been diving with before where the underwater photographer was and just ask them how do I become an underwater photographer. So they, they replied with all the information saying you need to do all these courses to become a professional diver um, and you need to get yourself an underwater camera as well. So at that point obviously the courses were quite expensive and all the camera equipment is even more expensive. So I just got the first job I could get um, and started saving money. Uh, that job was stock taking, so it wasn't much fun, but it, it was unsociable hours as well, working mainly evenings or very early mornings. So it meant that I managed to save money pretty quickly. And eight months later, I, was a, I had enough money, I was able to buy the camera, um, a complete new camera setup. Um, it was a brand new DSLR inside, inside a, what we call Icolite housing. Um, so yeah, it, was, it wasn't the best underwater camera, but it was enough to get me started. And then I bought my a one-way plane ticket back to Thailand and went to the um, back to the dive school I'd been at before and did all the courses from open water all the way up to dive master and that took me about six months and then started looking for work um, in in Thailand um, on the same island that I was on so I was on Koh Tao and I got got a job there um, at a dive school called Science Scuba. Um, it, was, it, was a, it, was a, it was my first underwater photography job, so I can't complain about it. But I'd been working there for about a month when the manager then called me into the office one morning um, <laughs> and just said, um, well, he didn't say it in a very simple way, but basically said that they wanted to lower how much they were paying. Um, and he said it in a bit of a complicated way to try and trick me into it. Um, but I sat there and I thought for a second and I went, hang on, no, you want to pay me less. That's not right. Um, so I said, all right, okay, well, today will be my last day working here then. So, I, yeah, that was it, my last day working there. Um, spoke to some friends in in Thailand um, that I'd made whilst I'd been living there, um, obviously told them my situation and they said, oh, I've got a friend over on an island on the other side of Thailand, um, in Koh Lanta. Um, the season for diving is just starting over there. So why don't you go there um, and we'll see what happens. I'll see and try and get a job there. So I got the job and um then continued continued to work there for about another six months um the first thing the manager at that job said to me was that i needed to get an underwater strobe so it's basically an underwater flash unit um to attach to my camera setup um this manager was very into photography herself um, so she helped me a lot to build up my underwater photography skills um, and yeah getting that strobe definitely picked up my level of photography um, and I started to get some really good pictures um, and that's I think maybe where it started to take off um, so yeah I was working there for about six months and then went on had a actually I was a friend who I was working with in Thailand um, he was starting up a new business in Malaysia um, a new dive school on a small island in the north of Malaysia and he invited me to come and be the photographer with him there so moved on to to Malaysia um, again it's uh, it was a very seasonal island so the season was only about six months and then went yeah continued worked there for about six months um had a lot of fun it was a bit of a party island so enjoyed just enjoyed going out most nights doing a bit of dancing maybe drinking a bit too much but then getting up in the morning and going for a dive 
and getting rid of the hangover on the water basically um I was taking pictures and yeah it was it was just a great experience um then yeah from there or well, whilst I was in Malaysia um one of the best things about moving around and being in the scene that I was in was being able to talk to all the travellers and find out where they had been and where, like, where I should go next and just um, basically creating a very, very long bucket list. Um, so at that point, one of the things that was top of my bucket list was to work on what we call liverboards in the dive industry. Um, these are basically boats that you go as a passenger, you go and you spend anything from two nights to I think there's some that are two weeks long on this boat and obviously the boat travels around to different dive locations. Um, so Whilst I was in Malaysia, I applied for a couple of jobs um, on liverboards and I got offered one back in Thailand and when, went up to this job in Thailand, um, which was absolutely amazing diving. Um, as everyone who had been doing or who had been on liverboards before and had recommended them to me, it was amazing diving because the liverboards take you further out from the coast um, and get you get to go to all these other places where there's not so many divers and there's more marine life because you're further away from the coast and things as well. So um, that's where I had my first experience with whale sharks, um, manta rays. Um, the first time I saw some cuttlefish breeding um, and actually mating and laying their eggs and absolutely loved that that was just so beautiful um and another strong experience i remember from that is being um on a dive site called um kota chai and it's a big flat like pinnacle area um under the water and you go down and you just sort of sit on the top of this pinnacle and there's just so many fish around I mean, big, big schools of bait fish, big schools of barracuda. Um, and then you get these giant rebellies, which are probably the size of a table. Um, and they're massive. They, they swim in and they're so fast. Um, there was a couple of times I was just sitting there and I really thought one was about to swim into me. They come at you so quickly. Um, and it's, it's a little bit scary, but also... Um, exciting and um, yeah just just so amazing to, to have that adrenaline rush um, and also see everything as well it's it's a brilliant brilliant experience that I, I'm so happy to have had um, the only problem with that job was again the owner of the company um so he for some reason he just didn't like my my style of photography he didn't like my work very much um he again was very much into photography but um uh, he he had a lot of criticism about my work saying that maybe my exposure wasn't so good and my that my use of color wasn't very good um and i actually remember him commenting once um that um, because I had a degree in photography, he expected my work to be a much higher standard than I was actually providing him. Um, so he ended up giving me less and less work the longer I worked there. So I ended up leaving. Um, I'd been away from England for about two years at that point and decided maybe it was time just to sort of go home, see the family. Um, just take a little break. So I went back home for about five weeks. And um, whilst I was there, the manager from Malaysia messaged me and said, do you want to come back um, So and do another season with us? So I said yes. Um, I went back, went back to Malaysia um, and spent another season working there. Um, after that, I then again, listen to friends' recommendations um, and some of my close friends were moving on to the Philippines. Um, so again, I went there. Um, just before I went, sent out some emails to dive schools in the Philippines um, and again, got 
luckily got offered a job um, on an island called Boracay. This island, the first day we arrived on this island, um, I, I immediately knew it wasn't really the right place for me. It was very crowded, very busy, very touristy, um, and very noisy, as I think what I remember of, remember of that island. And it just didn't feel like a very relaxing place, which just didn't feel right for me. Um, but I stayed there because my friends were staying. So I stayed there. I worked there for, I think, about eight months. Um, but by the end of the eight months, I was very much fed up with the place uh, and very much ready to move on to the next, next part of my journey. Um, so I had a look at my bucket list um, and picked one of the places on there. And that was an island called Komodo in Indonesia, um, which is maybe, maybe you know it because of Komodo dragons. Um, yeah, I applied again, sent out emails to various dive stalls and liverboards um, that work around, um, co sorry, around Komodo. And again, I got an email reply from a guy um, who owned one of the liverboard boats in Komodo and it sounded like he was prepared to maybe give me a job. So I flew to Bali um, to meet with him and he then actually had during the meeting he said he made it very clear that he actually only really wanted me to go on one trip on the liverboard and then provide him with some promotional images. Um, so it wasn't exactly what I wanted to do but I took it anyway, so it was still a, treat, a free trip to Komodo, so I still at least got to visit and dive around Komodo, um, which again was an amazing experience. Lots more manta rays and sharks and everything. It's very strong currents, um, but very cool as well. So after that, I flew back to Bali um, and I was just in Bali, so just staying in Bali. And again, I was kind of was a bit of a what do I do now so just thought well I'm in Bali let's see if I can find any work here so I did I sent out some more emails to dive schools um, and got offered a, a job up in um, a little dive school up in a small village called Ahmed um, which is about three hours drive from the main centre of Bali from Denbasar and where all the main tourist beaches and things are um, so I, drew, I drove up there on the moped, um, took, me, yeah, took me over three hours to drive up there on the moped by myself, um, just for an interview basically. Um, and yeah, they, they were surprised that I'd driven up there just for, just for that. But as soon as I got there, they were very, walk, very welcoming um, and they, I in, instantly felt like the right place for me. So we agreed I'd start work the next week there um, and I moved all my stuff up there, found a place to live and I actually ended up staying there for 18 months and yeah, they became, they became a very close family. I got a very good group of friends there that I'm still in touch with now um, and I still talk to regularly and I think just over a, after it just, well, oh, just over a year of being there, um, one of these very close friends of mine, um, she's half Balinese and half Australian. Um, her, both her and her brother live over there and run, run some hotels. And she said to me, my brother's got one of his friends coming over. Um, I think you're gonna like him. You should come to the bar tonight and meet him. Um, so I just sort of thought, yeah, yeah, whatever. Went to, went to the bar anyway, just to have a drink. And this guy walks in and my friend nudges me and goes, so that's Mike, what do you think? Um, um, I kind of didn't really know what to say. Um, but yeah, we ended up, we ended up talking that night, um, got on very well. And then obviously he had to go back to Australia. Um, so we stayed in touch. Um, mainly emailing um, and eventually got him talking on Facebook and stuff as well. He's not very good with all the social media stuff, bless him. Um, but I then 
planned to actually go and visit him just for two weeks in Australia. And just before I was about to go visit him on this little holiday as such, um, they, immigration started looking around and um, being very difficult about visas and things. So I, I nearly got into some trouble with, with visas and immigration and everything. Um, so when I took this two week holiday, I actually decided maybe I shouldn't go back to Bali just because the visa situation is so difficult. Maybe I should stay in Australia. Um, so I basically moved in with who is now my partner. Um, basically moved in with him in that, what was supposed to be a holiday period. And then again was in the, oh, now what do I do? I kind of don't have a job situation. So did, did my same thing of just sending out some emails to companies in Australia, trying to find a job. And um, there wasn't anything on the West Coast. So when I came into Australia, um, I flew into Perth and was, I was there for about three months in total. Um, but I, unfortunately, it was the wrong timing. I just missed the dive season on the West Coast. It was they just started the season and therefore had employed all the people they needed for the season. Um, so a couple of the companies I was talking to recommended I look on the East Coast over towards Cairns area. Uh, so I did and got offered a job to start a few months later over um, on the east coast uh, just north of Cairns in a little tourist town called Port Douglas which is where I am now. Um, so yeah me and my partner decided that we would um, basically up and move over to the east coast, um, packed up all our things, put them into, well actually we sold his little car and bought a slightly bigger car, um, put everything, packed everything into it and drove the 10,000 kilometers from Perth over to here. Um, it took us six weeks to do that and it was a lot of fun. We stopped in a lot of national parks. Um, my favorite was a national park called Karangini, which is it's just full of gorges. So just absolutely amazing wildlife and rock formations um, and just landscapes and everything was just just beautiful. Um, I didn't want to leave there but unfortunately we had to keep moving and we did. Eventually we made it all the way across Australia um, and I started working here. Um, within maybe the first week of working in my new job here, uh, I kind of started to realize that the company didn't necessarily do things the way that I would like them to be done. Um, and they still don't. I tried to, tried to offer suggestions to them, but they didn't really listen. So yeah, working, working with them still, um, but only because they offered me a visa for a permanent residency. So they sponsored my permanent residency in Australia. So I'm now, I am almost finished my sponsorship. So my sponsorship will be finished in February. Um, obviously at the moment due to COVID, um, I'm not working. It's all the, the whole town's shut down basically. Uh, it's extremely quiet. Nothing, the only thing that is open is the, is the local supermarket. Um, everything else is shut. <laughs> so it's been very quiet the last month and a half. Um, I've just been at home, but it's given me a chance to start working on something which I've been dreaming about basically since, since I arrived in Port Douglas, which is um, almost three years ago now. So that's, that's what I really want to sort of start talking to you guys about now. Um, and that's moving into teaching photography courses. Um, so I've got about 15 years experience as a photographer and been photographing many different things, mainly nature photography and um, a lot of underwater. Um, but I'm moving a lot more away from the underwater side of things now and moving more into photographing wildlife and nature above water. Um, just north of where I live, we have an amazing rainforest called the Daintree Rainforest. Um, it's 
it's absolutely beautiful. There's so much unique wildlife and insects and birds, and everything there that you can't see anywhere else in the world. And I, I love it. I'm very passionate about it. And I want to learn as much about it as I can. And I want to share that passion for the wildlife and also the photography with people around me. Um, so my main aim actually is to start doing photography tours into the into the rainforest um, and taking people out with their cameras and finding these amazing little things and teaching them how to get the best photos and how to use the light in the rainforest because lighting in the rainforest is very difficult. Um, you've got so many trees, uh, everything blocking out all the natural sunlight and it can be very dark, um, which is very difficult for photography. So obviously I can't be doing that right now. So what I've decided to do during this period of COVID is actually to start writing a series of books on photography. Um, and the, um, I'm actually on my second book now, um, and that's actually gonna be launched on Saturday, Saturday the 9th of May. Um, and it's, it's on exposure. Um, and I actually just wanna explain well, I actually just want to read the first couple of paragraphs, if I can, of the book um, to you guys, just to let, give you an idea of what the book is about. So I've just got it here and just have a sip of water and then we'll start. All right. So photography is the act of capturing light. Exposure is a term used to measure how much light we are capturing. A correct exposure is when, when we have used just the right amount of light not too much nor too little, to create a pleasing result. What may be pleasing to one person is not always pleasing to another. And therefore photography, just like every other art form, is subjective. So why is it important to get a correct exposure? Well, quite simply, if your image is overexposed, too much light, or underexposed, not enough light, then it will be hard for the viewer to see the subject. If your viewer can cannot see the subject, then what is the point of the photograph? So that's the first couple of paragraphs of, of my book. Um, and I just wanted to read that just for anyone here who doesn't really know photography. Um, and just, to, just a quick introduction to what photography is and how exposure fits into photography. Um, so just for those people listening who do understand photography, I'm just going to give a brief outline of what else is covered in the book. So I cover what shutter speed, aperture and ISO is, um, how to use them and um, what their limitations are as well. Also cover um, how to use a light meter to get, help you get the correct exposure, how to use a histogram to make sure you, to help you check your photos and make sure that your, your exposure is correct in the photos which you have taken. Um, and I'll go through just a flow chart of um, steps to take on how to get the best exposure, how to know what settings to use to get the right exposure for the environment that you're, you are in. Um, and then at the end of the book, there's also some exercises for you to do as well to get you practicing um, changing these settings and getting a correct exposure. Um, basically, I just, I love sharing, sharing my knowledge. Um, and I just, I want everyone else to be able to take amazing photos just like I do. That's absolutely gorgeous, Tracy. Thanks. I just, I just love your, your enthusiasm and, and your, your courage actually because you've just followed the uh, the stepping stones of life or the breadcrumbs you've always landed on your feet and what stands out the most for me is that you've always had integrity with yourself and your values so when a, a Thank you. Yeah. job right and 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 then that has taken you up the highest um pathway if that makes sense to you and now you're yeah. in a position where you're just and you've always followed your heart and your passion and and you've observed and now you're doing this project that 
that just embraces and encompasses i mean your joy and your passion for what you do just like it's so so gorgeous and it's so powerful that um anyone who's even thinking about photography or already does it will will just be infected and the way that you describe the underwater i mean i'm, I'm scared of underwater but seeing sharks and stuff and that big fat massive table sized fish that that's budget barging towards you sounded just yeah. like like a monster so i you you know the way that you've told the story is is just gorgeous i i i just think it's it's wonderful and tell us about your launch event this saturday and how you're going to do that online yeah um it's uh, it's gonna it's gonna be a great day um so i've got lots of events happening um on saturday um obviously they're all virtual events so um it's all going to be done via a facebook event um and using my website as well so you can come and join the facebook event um there's going to be a tutorial which is going to go through more of the book um and actually it's actually going to be me talking through the book basically um as if i was in a lesson with you so you actually get to experience via a video what it's like to be in a lesson with me. Um, and of course, um, I can do lessons, lessons online as well as in person. So wherever you are in the world, um, it's possible for you to book a lesson with me, a one-on-one, -on -one, and talk about whatever area of photography you want to talk about, basically that's that's absolutely wonderful and and tell us what your website name is and what the event name is so i'll put the links on the bottom but just so that people yeah. can hear it okay um so my website is www.tracy t-r-a-c-e-y jones j-o-n-e-s photography.com um then my facebook page and my instagram are just tracy jones photography um and you can also email me tracy jones photography at gmail.com well that's great thank you so much tracy and right. i have just loved every minute of every minute of celebrating you today and and hearing your your amazing journey i i just think we've all had very interesting career pathways and career yeah. um journeys and learnings yeah. and, and difficulties and and that journey, that doors close that one opens and just for me what stands out so much is just your courage and and you're going with the flow and i was just thinking that that's really relative to the the water and you diving you really yeah. have just gone with the flow with so much courage and I, I really commend you for that. And I just think even, even if someone's watching and, and they're not interested in photography per se, this is a, a really outstanding story of somebody doing life with, with so much courage and joy. So huge congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. It's been, it's been great telling the story. I, something I do enjoy telling because it, it is a good story, I think. Thank you so much. Well, thank you. Thank you.